Welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the Novation FL Key Mini and FL Key 37 MIDI controllers built specifically for FL Studio. We'll take a look at the build quality, lots of the features, and also some of the included software. But what really makes these keyboards special is that they both take advantage of the unique workflow of FL Studio. So you can use them as sequencers to control the channel rack, mixer, and really use them as a DAW controller as much as just a MIDI keyboard. So there's loads to get to. Let's get right into it. The first thing I want to say is that Novation are supporting this video. They very kindly sent me both keyboards to try out and see if I liked them. As usual, everything in this video is my own opinion. And if you're interested to find out more or purchase one of these keyboards, you can find links in the video description along with lots of other useful bits of information down there too. The keyboards come in two sizes. So you have the 25 key FL key mini. So that's about two octaves worth of keys. You have 16 touch sensitive pads, eight rotary encoders, DAW transport controls and touch sensitive pitch and mod controllers. The other option is the 37 key FL key 37. So that's about three octaves of keys, this time full size keys, the same number of pads and encoders. It has a few more transport controls, a screen for DAW feedback, and instead of those touch strips, this time they feature wheels with a very smooth action. Both are USB MIDI keyboards that can be used with both Mac and PC. And they also both feature MIDI outs and the ability to use a sustain pedal, which is what I prefer to do when playing the keys. They both also come with a six month free trial of FL Studio Producer Edition, which is the edition that I use and recommend. And they come with a bundle of genuinely excellent software that we're going to be taking a look at towards the end of the video. They share a lot of the same features. So choosing between them is more to do with space and size than the features and the functions that you want. If you value full size keys, then the FL key 37 would be a natural choice. This is my personal preference for a MIDI controller size, as I think that it fits well in most home studios. But if you have a lot less desk space, you're working in a compact setup, or you want to travel with your music production setup, then the FL key mini would be an obvious choice. So we've had a bit of an overview, but let's dive into some of the features. And we're going to start with the pads and the rotary encoders. And the real beauty of this design is that everything is pre-mapped and optimized for FL Studio. So the pads can serve many functions depending on which mode you select. In channel rack mode, you can audition and select different channels. But if I change it over to instrument mode, you can use the pads or keys to perform on the selected instrument. On both keyboards, you can also lock the pads and keys to a scale of your choice so that you can't hit a wrong note. In this mode, it's also easy to change and select channels using these buttons here. Here I have selected the FPC drum machine. Now this used to take about five minutes to set up. You used to have to pre-map every single uh, pad, but now as you can see, they're all linked right there. This is great for finger drumming, which admittedly I'm not very good at, but I do enjoy it very much. And I try to do it as much as possible when creating music and beat making, because I really enjoy the tactile experience of performing drums on the pads, even if it's not one of my strengths. And the next feature is something that I was very happy they included, and I think you'll love it too. It's a note repeat button, which is something we haven't really had in FL Studio before. And this makes programming those hi-hat rolls really simple. You'd no longer need to dive into the piano roll and split them up unless you want to get very advanced with it. So instrument mode is a lot of fun and it's a brilliant feature, but my favorite mode is the sequencer. This really takes advantage of FL Studio's workflow. The pad banks have now become steps on the channel rack. And as you can see, it's super easy to just program a beat, move to a new channel, add more sounds in. Not only is it simple to add steps and visualize them right in front of you, but you can also hold down steps and adjust their per note parameters like velocity. You can shift them off the grid. On the surface, it's an intuitive sequencer. You can't really go wrong with it, but there is the possibility to dive deep and adjust all those parameters if you need to. Because often creating a drum groove, it's not just about where you place the notes, but it's all about the velocity and how it all interacts. Depending on which mode you select, these eight rotary encoders will be pre-mapped to either important plugin parameters, 
channel volumes, mixer pan and volumes, so you can use these to control the DAW and also mix as you go. And as for the quality, they've got this nice rubberized texture on them and they have a good weight, so they're very smooth. They don't sort of jump around, you know, from one value to another. You've got to put in a little bit of a sort of weight behind it. It's very smooth. Let's take a look at the FL key 37 now. Specifically, we want to look at this keyboard. So if I put it back into instrument mode, I'm going to perform using the included Addictive Keys piano. This is a piano plugin I've been using for years. I'm so glad that they included it with these keyboards because in my opinion, it's the most realistic and expressive piano plugin. And we're going to use this to record directly on top of that loop that we just created. keys have a lovely feel, and it's what I would describe as a synth action keyboard, so they're quite responsive and springy, but they have enough weight that if you want to play something like a piano, it also suits it well. So it's great for fast melodies and synthesizers, it'll keep up with that sort of playing, but it's also soft and smooth enough that if you want to play a piano, it suits it quite nicely as well. Both keyboards feature that scale mode that I mentioned earlier, where you can lock the keys or pads to a scale of your choice, but FL key 37 also features an advanced chord mode where the pads can trigger full chords, and this is especially useful when you're performing. Something that makes both of these keyboards special is just how easy they are to use. Everything is laid out and labeled well, so there's no need to dive through a manual. It's very much a plug and play device, and that's something I want to stress. Although in this video, I might be going through mode after mode to try and show you the features. When you use it, everything just feels fluid and easy. The FL key 37 does have a small screen, but you're not going to be using this to, you know, dive through settings and modes. It really just gives you some feedback about the mode you're using, maybe the scale or chord you have selected, and that's it. The rest of the device is very much a tactile and creative experience, which is something that I'm always looking for in the studio. So I think it's clear that I like the build quality and the features, but let's take a look at some of the included software. As I mentioned at the start, both keyboards come with a six-month trial of FL Studio Producer Edition. We also briefly looked at that XLN Addictive Keys Piano, which is by far my favourite piano plugin. And along with that, they've included a copy of Expressive Strings by Spitfire Audio, and this is just a joy to play. The effects from Clevegrund, if I'm pronouncing that right, uh, are excellent. The reverb creates so much space and dimension, and the tape cassette is excellent for adding tone and character, especially in a lo-fi mix. For all the details about everything that's included in the software and all the sounds included with the keyboards, please do check the description down below. To summarize my thoughts, I think they're both excellent keyboard controllers. Choosing between them really is just a case of the size and the space you actually have in your studio because the feature sets are very similar. They're now the only keyboard that I think makes any sense to buy if you have FL Studio or if you're looking to get into FL Studio. For years, no keyboards have really worked properly with FL Studio at all. But now Novation and ImageLine have just taken care of that. You simply plug the keyboard in and it's genuinely a joy to use. One of the things that I found when reviewing this keyboard, you know, in, in the weeks leading up to this video, is that I just managed to get creative with some beat making again. And that's something I've struggled with from time to time. Sometimes when you're using the software, you're just, you know, on a keyboard with a mouse. Sometimes it works, but I really miss that tactile experience. I like performing with keys, pads, using rotary encoders, playing the sequencer right in front of me. It's made performing and playing music genuinely enjoyable. That's really one of the reasons why I wanted to make this review. If you have any questions at all about using this device or FL Studio, please leave them in the comments section down below. I try my best to reply to all comments, especially on the day that I post the video. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.